draw time. As in, time to draw. So John, your poor car's missing. We know where it's at, and we know what we're doing. Of course, without this sketch, we wouldn't know where to start. Well, Jason sounds like one deserving dude. So Chip burns the midnight oil here on night one, coming up with ideas that are gonna get the ball rolling for this Tahoe's transformation. All right, it's into day one, everybody's gone home. I've done a rough sketch that I wanna show Willie tomorrow. He thinks Jason might like this. He told me Jason likes blue, he likes grays. I think we can two-tone the truck silver and blue, and I want to pick up just in a, a very small detail that's either on the rear quarter or in the front fender, this kidney bean shape that's just part of the pinstriping, and uh, we'll see what he thinks tomorrow. Chip mans the drawing board as we give ourselves a reminder, such as... There's no law that says a 95 Tahoe can't be a radical ride, but the one we took from Jason was basically nothing more than one yawn of a people mover. Well, we've already started to change all that out on the shop floor. And now, thanks to the pens and the power of Foos, we're delivering on an overused phrase by giving it true definition. This vehicle is being taken to a whole new level. One good look at this brilliant sketch will tell you, it's gonna be an awesome off-road opus. Here's Chip at his favorite hobby. So Foos, tell us about how it all began. Actually, I've been drawing since I was about three years old. Most people don't know it, but my father's a very talented artist. I used to sit next to him and copy whatever he was drawing. Every Christmas and birthday and whatnot, my father gave me art supplies, so I got to just sit around and draw. It's just something that I was always passionate about. Well, his passion is the car world's game. And to be even more specific at the moment, Tyson's game. It's a combination of white silver and cool blue surfing flames coming together for the design. And they're all going on a project that had to be one of the most unique starts in overhaul in history. Well, there you go, Tyson. That's your final design on your car based on the information that I got from the insiders. And tomorrow we'll be putting the color on. Well, Chip's heard some things about what Mike likes, and he's going to do a rough sketch to show Stephanie what's on his mind and what's on his drawing board. He is making the Roadster, taking the top off the easy way. He's drawing it off. The hard part will soon follow. Taking the factory roof off a rusty old car is not easy. In fact, this might fall into that famous Foose category of biting off more than we can chew. Hey, Mike. You're getting overhauled. When you ask what it's like to bring a car alive for a person in Mike's situation, it's no different than anybody else. We're just building his dream car. And if we hit the mark right, and he's excited about the car, that's what it's all about. It's not because somebody's in a wheelchair or not. It's just that we've made somebody's dream come true. That's what it's all about for me. Chip's right about that. But around the shop this week, everybody has a great attitude when it comes to doing something special for a guy who is really going to get turned on by this ride. Mike the car guy who clearly lets nothing stand in his way. And if we can put something together for a dude like that, that is an overhaul worth every hour we can put into it. Like we've been saying, Boost has cool tricks up his sleeve for this car. And even though the body came to us all perfect and essentially rust-free, we cannot let up even for a moment. With the plans Chip has, we're going to need every minute possible. That we can guarantee. And by the looks of Foose's sketch, probably even more.
know Mike. We hear you watch the show. We hear you're nuts about the work of Chip Foose. And with all that in mind, check this out. Well, Mike, that's what your car's going to look like. Well, it's already new, and she wants it black. So just what is Foose going to do with it? We know he's going with bigger wheels and tires. And we also know that a lot of the body is changing thanks to all of those new parts that are going on. And Chip has already been talking about a set of silver graphics that just might find their way onto the ride. But other than those modifications, we're just going to have to wait and see as Chip continues to draw into the night. Already, we can see that the car looks a lot more aggressive. Oh, man. So far on paper, this is turning out to be one of the coolest looking cars we have ever done. A wicked, sporty, stylish street machine that is definitely going to have her husband Richard asking the wife if he can borrow the keys. Where's your car? As the art evolves, she shares an important piece of John's history with Chip. When he was a teenager, he had a buddy named Mitch that gave him a 65 Ford truck. He always swore to Mitch that he'd fix it up. But then in uh, 98, he sold it to go into the SEAL team. But then uh, Mitch passed, and so ever since then, John wanted to buy a new 65 Ford truck, and he always swore he would, would fix it up. And ever what? since he bought it, it, it's been Mitch. That's what he named it. Yeah. That's his, his pride and joy. I know that Mitch meant a lot to you, and uh, I'm here to make Mitch a dream come true for you. I love you. I love you so much. And I'm, I'm just so overwhelmed that, that this is going to happen for Mitch. Wow. It's just a loose sketch, but... Absolutely beautiful. Can't believe how it just speaks to, to the spirit of John. Chip has a way of connecting spirits. That's it, right there. That's the that's the car that is made for John. I can't believe you did this just now. That is amazing. Just amazing. Beautiful. Look out, honey. We're gonna get you. We've seen the drawing. Now we have to get to the prank. Chip and Tanya discuss the new design elements for Frederick's Le Mans. Our insider says that anything Chip does to the car will be okay with Frederick. Our Mark is a crazed fan of the show and greatly admires the Foos vision. But even with that sort of leeway, some of the major elements were established with our insider, such as the color scheme, wheel size, and the style of the interior. as this drawing indicates, that old car will soon be forgotten as Frederick's Pontiac evolves into one fully foosified dream ride. All right, Frederick, get your car. Foose is on a rare family vacation, but he'll be here later in the week. In the meantime, we're building from a perfect sketch because Chip redesigned Ivan's Nova before he left for his trip. Days before day one of our build, Chip had a secret meeting with Ivan's wife, Shannon. That's where she revealed what Ivan wants in a remade 70 Nova. Shannon and Chip discussed everything from car color to body mods, from wheel size to the interior. Our insider is a wife who knows exactly what her husband wants in a dream ride because Ivan has been dreaming about fixing up his tattered old car for a good long while. Shannon hasn't seen the sketch yet, but she's now on her way. In its day, Martin 65 was one of the most sought-after rides on the road. A car combining looks and power. That's why Chip's working to keep all that's classic in the 65 Chevy, making sure that even as it receives a whole new look, it's also retaining its pure and perfect cool. And with Vanessa cluing in Foos even further, it's going to become Martin's ultimate Impala. No doubt Vanessa's going to want to drive it too. 
our insider did mention black, and it looks like that found its way onto Chip's drawing board. Of course, with Foose, there's no such thing as just a black car, even if black is the only finish on the ride. How is that possible? Well, let's just say that Chip always delivers big. And this ride will go beyond black, with Rally Stripes cool enough to have Vanessa already in love with the car from the drawing alone. Right, Vanessa? Hey, Martin, I know that right now you don't know where your car is, but we do, and we know what we're doing to it. Well, sheer talent is what he's got all right, along with an idea that came from our insider, an idea that was expressed back when Joe's husband first got a hold of overhauling. But before that idea is unleashed, Chip maps out his color scheme. With the main colors present, Boost heads for that notion hatched by the person closest to our mark. Andy had submitted Joe's magnum, and on the submission form, he had indicated that Joe really liked the Mike LaValle flames. So it looks like it's going to be some Mike LaValle flames coming her way, along with other surprises that will arrive with that special Boost touch. All right, Joe, just a couple more days, you get the real one. There's no rest for the wickedly talented, as Foos figures it's never too late to pick up the pens and redesign a ride. And this ride is going to be wild. David said he wants his Camaro to be powerful and noticed. And if anyone can deliver all that, it's got to be Foos. The owner also said he likes Candy Apple Red and Midnight Blue. So with those two colors on board, there's going to be a hot rod in the works before we know it. The big thrill here is the presence of David at Chip's table. It's the first time that one of our owners has seen the drawing before the car's even built. If it's a thrill for us, imagine the thrill for David, knowing that Foose is going to work the rest of the week to make that sketch drivable. That's a work of art right there. That's gorgeous. Time for our designer to do some designing. Well, if you're wondering why I'm drawing three cars, I've got three different ideas of what I want to do color-wise. So I'm going to pull some markers out, throw some rough colors down, look at where we're going before we do a final rendering, make a decision based on these of what color the car should go, and then I'll do the final rendering. It's always the hard way with this guy. I say, why not just throw all of Chip's markers into a big hat, close your eyes, pull out a pair, flip a coin over those two, and there you go. Instant car color. Oh, well. I guess that's why all those insiders talk to him and not me when it comes to what shade of paint they want on the Mark's ride. I'll explain how to do it, but first, get this. He hand-drew the car three times. Who's they have these things now called copy machines? Besides, you don't need three drawings or copies. You make a line drawing, there's your white car. Color it red, now it's a red car. Color the red black, it's a black car. That's the way to color three cars. Man, do I have to figure out everything here? So, Dennis, there's three samples. What I'd like to do is show them to Stephanie, see what she thinks you'd like. Two artists put their heads together to plan for a van. Chip redesigns the ride as Mike LaValle fires up one dragon of a graphic. I was thinking something like this. And Mike takes his demonstration even further, sketching out a bit of his notion right onto the white donor van. When it's the combination of Mike LaValle and Chip Foose, it's the collaboration of talent and talent. With Chip seeing ideas from LaValle and then putting Mike's ideas into a Foose rendering, making the graphics in the drawing just like Mike's. One of the things that I want to do when I'm illustrating for Mike to flame this van is I'll look at Mike's work and the style that he uses, and I'm going to try and imitate that in my rendering so that when it comes time for Mike to flame the van, it's more his style. It's not him trying to interpret what I did. I'm trying to interpret what Mike does now. And now, Chip needs to finish the overall design. There's a certain flow that I want as a graphic image to the flames, which will come off the front and carry down off the wheel well and up and then swoop around and it's going to follow around into the back. And then I've got a little idea where, where the dragon is the tail will become fire and his head is coming up and become fire so on both sides there's a dragon that looks like he's almost crawling on the back doors. A crawling dragon it is, along with a message from Foos to a van owner who's presently as blue as this sketch. All right, John, your van's not stolen. You're getting overhauled. Master to get the master plan on paper.
divided by chrome like the standard Bel Air, this Nomad was born to be a two-tone machine. Of course, until he gets it back, David is going to be upset and worried. Hey David, don't you worry, we've got your car. But you're getting your car back on D-Day. You're on overhauling. Proven with the following prank. Goose is going to draw, and here's how it usually happens at this early stage. The insiders watch, and they begin to forget about the actual car. They start to figure that the mark is going to be real happy with the drawing alone. Of course, days later, the real shock comes when the ride ends up looking as cool as the sketch. That's the magic of our boy Chip, a guy who can have you swooning while the vehicle is still on paper. That's my first idea of what we could do. That's beautiful. The silver with the black top and the red stripe between. So he gets his red and black. It's something that's very subtle and would go with the car. Okay, now what do you do? Now we build it like this. <laughs> yup, it's as simple as that. Chip begins designing the custom Cobras for Merrick's charged up charger, making the seats into one of a kind red and black boost up creations. They're going to be stunners covered in Keystone leather and brought to life by the team at Bill Dunn. Guys who know how to create an interior and do it with stock. It's time for Chip to finalize his design. This car wasn't designed to be a hot rod originally. It was transportation. Only the well-off could afford a car like this. It was rare that you even own a vehicle back in those days, especially at the depression just hitting. Well, Boos is pulling this car way out of its depression. When I first saw this car when it came in, I knew we had to keep the wheels. The wheels are so cool. You don't really see a lot of these that often. Chip's completing a design that is already taking major modification and fabrication. It's a lot to do in seven days. Hey, Matt, don't worry. We have your car. That's what you're getting back on D-Day. we got to get busy. I did a couple sketches I wanted to show you. Awesome. I know you said he's a single-tone guy. I think so. But I actually did three different two-tones. I like them. But you like this one. I like them all, though. Yeah? Yeah. That's usually the way it is when Foose draws. You end up liking everything he puts to paper. But the problem is simple. We're only building one car. So Chip works his magic right here and now for Lisa. He whips up a version that soon has our insider sold on a paint scheme, having already convinced her that a two-tone design is the way to go. I gotta say... You like that one better? Yeah. It's got some richness to it. Yeah. It kind of seems like it fits his personality a little bit more. Good. Yeah. Mark, you're gonna get a two-tone. <laughs> he is, but Chip's still spinning the color wheel. All right, it's 9 p.m., day one. Got the car back from the Media Blaster. It's a beautiful car. The body on this thing looks exceptionally well. Very little body damage, very little rust, so it looks like it's going to be pretty smooth as far as the paint and body work on the car. Good news so far, and as that small amount of body work gets underway and the team anticipates smooth sailing on this voyage, the guys know that all in all, they are off to one very good start. Good morning in day two. As you can see, the car's torn apart. The best part of it, the car was in such great shape. We don't have that much work to do, although anything that can happen will happen on overhaul. And what's happening now? Chris will tell us what just rolled in. Well, here you go, Mark. Here's your new engine, courtesy of Guarantee Chevrolet. Looks like Mark's going to go faster thanks to GM performance. Crate 350 puts out about 330 horsepower. It's being fed by a Holly Series 600 single feed. Beautiful, huh? And it's going in a beautiful design. Chip sure can draw. That's for sure. And the man is fast. Fast is right. And fast is also the speed that he can change your opinion when he's more than determined to make a car cool. See, Mark's wife Lisa first thought her husband wanted a solid colored ride. But Foose made her see the Cutlass as the perfect candidate for a two-tone vehicle. Well, it looks like Chip's going to need to convince Lisa yet again. Because the last time she saw the design, it was a two-tone combo featuring a sharp contrast, starring intense copper as the main side color. Now, Boo sees the car as champagne and white. All right, Mark, I know you're going through a little bit of hell, but I hope it's worth it. I'd say that's worth it. All right, ideation. The rough sketch is just what I call an ideation sketch. It's the idea of what we're going to do to the car. We can get started, get the build going. When I do the final rendering, it's more of a refined version of the same thing. And refined is the word for the info we got from our insider, Richard. 
Chips rarely receives such a specific request for the body color, and it's easy to see that he likes the choice. What I really like about this color, that amethyst pearl, when you pull it out in the sun, that car is literally going to go from a black to a blue on the top surface. It'll look like it's a two-tone color. It's going to be a great-looking car outside. Well, knowing Chip and the A-Team, it's going to be a great-looking car inside as well, with a whole new stance, a handcrafted interior from Bill Dunn, and a stunning set of wheels designed by Boos himself. All right, David, we have your car. And now we know what it's going to look like. Noemi's our first Mark who's fully committed to a car she's never really driven for any true period of time. Knowing she wanted a 64 Impala, she tracked this one down, determined to make it into a winner. Knowing how much she wants to keep it stock, Foose works his magic with a subtle hand, bringing out new features while he retains the classic feel of a true and traditional cruiser. A Friday night ride bound to turn heads. It's going to be a frustrating week for Noemi. She found her Impala and now it's in a legal tangle. But on D-Day, I have an idea of how she'll feel. Figuring all that trouble was more than worth it. All right, Noemi. I know you think your car is missing, but we've got it and this is what we're doing to it. Now that is one cool and hot 64 Impala. Back on... stolen but it's in good hands. Ready goes black. Well, let's see what he wants to do this time. From the rings, that's the eagle globe and anchor. What I want to do is get two of those chrome and they'll actually be little uh, emblems on the fenders. Chris approves and that makes it unanimous. It looks like Chip has done it again. Drawing incredibly as he shimmies this build right along. All for our returning Marine. Alonzo, it's all for you. And it's all coming together for you as we now enter... graphics how did you come up with this I didn't want to do a, a known graphic off of the Chevrolet so I took the two stripe idea which is a rally stripe and just applied it to the side breaking off of those gills we'll see how it looks when it's painted nice. I think it's gonna be beautiful all right David there's your car 